Our world consists not of atoms, but of stories. The events of the movie take place in a small town on Raven's End Island in the 1980s. Newspapers are writing about something found in the local waters. A boy named Bill, delivering newspapers, found himself at the doorstep of a funeral home, intending to take a photo. But he was caught by Montgomery Dark, the eccentric mortician whom everyone in town considers strange. The boy got scared and ran so fast that he dropped his camera. Montgomery was already used to such things. Today another funeral took place. Grieving parents mourned their son Logan. Montgomery delivered a long mournful eulogy. After the funeral, Montgomery escorted everyone present, expressing his condolences. A storm was brewing. At some point, Montgomery realized he was not alone here. A girl named Sam came because she had seen an advertisement that the funeral home needed a mortician's assistant. Sam has no experience in this, but she assured that she is a quick learner. Montgomery said that most people couldn't handle it, but the girl wasn't scared. She was surprised that there were so many books in the funeral home. Montgomery explained that it was an archive. Each book contained stories of how and why people ended up in the funeral home. Sam asked the mortician to tell her one of the stories. Feeling the excitement, Montgomery decided to tell Sam the scariest thing she had ever heard. In the 1950s, during a party, a woman named Emma entered the restroom to retrieve money from stolen wallets. Anything Emma deemed worthless, she threw in the trash. The woman was about to leave when suddenly she heard a sound coming from the medicine cabinet. Out of curiosity Emma tried to open it, but unsuccessfully. However Emma didn't give up. When she finally managed to do it, she saw a monster with tentacles trying to grab her. Emma slammed the cabinet door shut and called for help, but no one heard her. When everything quieted down, Emma tried to leave silently, but the tentacles burst out of the cabinet and grabbing Emma and taking her life, dragged her inside. This story didn't scare Sam at all. However, Montgomery Dark still had something to surprise her with. The mortician gave Sam a tour of the funeral home where she would be working. After that, Montgomery told the second story. In the 1960s on campus, Jake, a guy from a college fraternity, encouraged girls to behave more freely and to attend their party tonight. A sweet girl named Sandra promised to think about it. None of the young people were concerned that students had been disappearing lately. At night, the guys drank a lot. They competed to see who could get more girls. Jake believed he understood female psychology well, so none of the girls could resist him. The party was in full swing. Soon Sandra arrived, feeling less relaxed than the others. Jake kept his eyes on her, intending to add to his list of victories. Sandra immediately accepted his advances. The young people went into one of the rooms. Suddenly Sandra asked Jake if he had heard about the missing guys. However Jake was not concerned. The young people indulged in passion, but Jake neglected protection. When Jake woke up in the morning, Sandra was no longer there. However before leaving, the girl had written her phone number on the mirror with lipstick. Of course Jake had no intention of calling her. Suddenly the guy felt a strong nausea, but he didn't pay much attention, mistaking the symptoms for a hangover. Sandra was his 67th girlfriend. When Jake noticed a rash on his skin, he became worried and went to see a doctor the same day. After examining the patient's tests, the doctor was puzzled and conducted a checkup. Seeing the doctor's confusion, Jake panicked even more. When the doctor stepped out for a moment, Jake looked at his tests, which indicated that he was pregnant. Jake has no idea how this could be possible. His stomach was gurgling, he constantly felt nauseous. Suddenly Jake's stomach started to swell rapidly. Since he hadn't completely erased Sandra's number from the mirror in the morning, he tried to guess her number. Finally after several attempts, he succeeded. Pretending everything was normal, Jake asked Sandra to meet. She readily agreed. Jake grabbed the keys to his car. With each passing minute his condition worsened. However, the guys from the college fraternity didn't let him go, arranging a playful ceremony in honor of him reaching the sacred number 67. All Jake wanted at that moment was to leave as soon as possible, but his friends picked him up in their arms, calling him God. Suddenly Jake's water broke, which shocked everyone. Jake immediately went to Sandra's house, who lives with her parents. Her mother and father put Jake on the table to help him give birth. They considered it natural, while Jake didn't understand what was happening. Sandra came down and accused Jake of deliberately not using protection that night. In front of Jake, who was on the verge of madness, Sandra called another guy and invited him on a date. Jake began to give birth, which ended fatally for him. Sandra's mother took the baby in her arms and placed it in a crib. There were dozens of similar monsters here. This story didn't impress Sam either. Montgomery Dark told her to wait here and not touch anything. Of course Sam disobeyed him. She wanted to open the coffin, but didn't have time because Montgomery returned and asked her to follow him. They ended up in the embalming room. According to Montgomery, each deceased person holds their own story. The woman in the embalming room looked as if she were alive. Montgomery Dark did a good job, but beautiful appearance is only the surface behind which something terrifying lies. 
Montgomery Dark told the third story, which happened in the 1970s. Wendell Owens and Carol got married. They were in love and happy. Suddenly the bride fell into a catatonic state. From that moment on, Wendell's nightmare began, which has lasted a long time. Carol is seriously ill and lies in bed in a catatonic state all the time. The husband takes care of her diligently. Wendell's whole life revolves around his sick wife. In the apartment corridor, he crossed paths with an elderly neighbor who said that after the husband's demise, her life took on new colors. Wendell is tired of taking care of Carol, but despite everything, he dutifully fulfills his duties as a husband. Every day Wendell is like the previous one, nothing interesting happens in his life. Sometimes Carol sheds tears, but she is unable to say anything. The worst part is that Wendell has no way to pay the rent. Dr. Harold Kubler regularly visits the Owens home to check on Carol's condition. He concluded that the patient's condition is stable, so she may live for several more years, or perhaps longer. Wendell wasn't happy to hear this. Harold felt sorry for the patient, so he suggested adding more analgesics to Carol's food to end her suffering. Wendell was so exhausted that he agreed to it. In the evening, he arranged a farewell romantic dinner for his wife and gave her a rabbit-shaped statuette. Before, Carol used to be delighted with it, but now she only had an empty lifeless gaze. Realizing that his wife had long been absent, Wendell added an increased dose of medication to her food. After feeding Carol, he simply waited. Suddenly Carol moved her hand. A second later she grabbed the husband's hand. Wendell began to help his wife spit out the food, along with apologizing to her. When Wendell stopped holding her, Carol fell directly onto the statuette. This trauma proved to be fatal for her. Not knowing what to do, Wendell panicked and called Dr. Kubler, who advised him to get rid of the evidence. Before hanging up, Harold told Wendell never to call him again. Wendell was going to follow the doctor's advice. In the chest with the dowry, he found Carol's wedding dress and their wedding album. However, that happy life was already in the past, and the present seemed like a nightmare. Barely holding back his nausea, Wendell did what he had to do. He was haunted by hallucinations that Carol was still alive. Carrying the chest out of the apartment, Wendell waited for the elevator. Seeing a neighbor heading straight toward him, Wendell hurried. Suddenly the elevator got stuck. Wendell tried to open the door manually, but it didn't work. The elderly neighbor heard his desperate cries and approached. Wendell assured her that everything was fine. However, the woman didn't believe him and was about to call the police despite Wendell's protests. He was left in a confined space with the lifeless wife. Throwing away his wedding ring, Wendell shouted that he'd rather not have gotten married. At some point, eerie sounds began to come from the chest, and it opened by itself. As Wendell approached, the elevator started to descend. Happy moments from the past flashed before Wendell's eyes. It seemed like the elevator was falling endlessly. Wendell found himself weightless. Carol, in the form of a terrifying demon in the wedding dress, climbed out of the box and kissed Wendell. When the police arrived, he didn't react to anything, repeatedly reciting wedding vows. Montgomery Dark told Sam that after that, Wendell was sent to a psychiatric hospital. However, Sam doesn't judge Wendell, believing that anyone in his place would have done the same. Montgomery asked Sam to come down with him to the basement to help with the cremation. Sam didn't like Montgomery's stories because of its predictability. In each of these stories, the characters paid for their sins, but in life everything is different. However, Montgomery firmly believes that evil will always be punished. Before Montgomery started the cremation, Sam asked him to stop and confess that she was actually here not because of the job, but because of late Logan Kubler. Sam blames herself for his demise and wants to see him one last time. Montgomery Dark allowed her to. After that, Sam told the mortician Logan's story. One night she being a nanny was looking after Logan. Sam listened to messages on the answering machine. Logan's parents said they were going to be late. Despite the bad weather, Sam was in a great mood. She cooked and missed the news broadcast, which reported that a patient may have escaped from the local mental hospital. At some point, Sam saw a strange man in the house who was injured. Sam was scared as the man begged for help. Sam had no idea how to react. Suddenly, the answering machine turned on. Sam's worried mother talked about a dangerous criminal who had escaped from the asylum. This prompted Sam to act. A fierce fight ensued between her and the man. It seemed Sam was in a state of shock and didn't realize her actions, repeatedly launching attacks. When the man having neutralized Sam, ran upstairs to find Logan, the girl regained consciousness and rushed after him, and they started fighting again. Meanwhile Logan's parents arrived, but the nanny didn't open the door. The man was stronger, but Sam managed to push him off the stairs. Actually the woman claiming to be Sam is the criminal everyone is looking for. Dr. Kubler and his wife finally managed to break into the house and found the nanny lying lifeless on the floor. The escaped criminal's name is Charlotte Gibbons. Her nickname is the Tooth Fairy, she hunts for milk teeth. Discovering Logan, the couple screamed in horror. Charlotte came to Montgomery Dark's funeral home to retrieve Logan's milk tooth, 
adding to her collection. To avoid being caught, Charlotte wounded Montgomery, stating that in real life villains always win. Before she could escape, Montgomery Dark laughed. Inside him was embalming fluid. Something supernatural and ominous began to happen in the house. Charlotte tried to flee, but there was an invisible barrier at the exit from the morgue. Montgomery caught up with Charlotte, and she ran again hearing his sinister laughter. In the library Montgomery cornered her. While The Undertaker said he could never leave this place either, books containing the stories of Charlotte's victims fell from the shelves. Suddenly the books began to open on its own, and Charlotte's victims began to climb out of it to seek revenge and reclaim their milk teeth. Charlotte's story is just beginning. Montgomery Dark is happy because for the first time in decades, he will finally be able to leave the morgue. However as soon as Montgomery stepped into the sunlight, he turned into dust. Now Charlotte will replace the undertaker, with embalming fluid coursing through her veins. In the final scene, we see the newspaper delivery boy Bill, wanting to leave the funeral home as soon as possible. But Charlotte asked him to stay, saying she was just about to prepare dinner. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel not to miss more exciting new products. Also the authors will be pleased if you leave your opinion in the comments.